Tonight on KGW News, the possible TikTok ban that has local creators worried their business could go bust. So many people and businesses depend on TikTok. Plus, Oregon's governor puts pen to paper. The top of mind issues for Oregonians, legislators came together and they got the work done. So why is she waiting to sign the one that recriminalizes drugs? And later, it's one of the most closely watched races on the May ballot. I know we can move forward, but we need a new leader. But he's right that we're facing real challenges. It's just the old ideas that are wrong. How the candidates for Multnomah County DA plan to shape the next four years of criminal justice. Thanks for joining us at 11. I'm David Molko. We begin tonight with a Portland man arrested twice in two months for allegedly assaulting his neighbor and yelling racial slurs. Catherine Cook is in the newsroom with a closer look at these charges. Catherine. David, police say in both cases, the suspect punched the victim and called him a racial slur. According to court documents, the attacks happened at the Y East Plaza near 124th and Ash. The suspect is 51-year-old Fabian Stephen Big Eagle. Police say the first incident happened back on February 5th. The victim told police his neighbor, Mr. Big Eagle, punched him in the face. The apartment manager told investigators the victim had filed a complaint about Big Eagle back in January, saying he'd used a racial slur and was aggressive toward him without being provoked. Police say when they confronted Big Eagle, he was drunk and holding alcohol. They say he admitted to punching the victim because he had, quote, pounded on their shared apartment wall to disrupt him. Police arrested Big Eagle, who was charged with bias, crime and assault, then released. Then yesterday, officers responded to reports of another assault involving Big Eagle and the same victim. They noted once again the victim had been punched in the face and called a racial slur. When officers showed up, police say Big Eagle took off, but they arrested him early this morning at the apartment complex. And we spoke with a neighbor who does not know the victim or the suspect, but says bias crimes and people using racial slurs is something they deal with a lot. You know, when you're proud to be who you are and you walk with a certain pride about yourself, you know, it, it kind of convicts other people's spirits to the point where that's how they feel like they have to act, you know. And out of all the words in the world to use, that's, you know, what they choose to use. The Police Bureau's Major Crimes Unit is investigating both incidents. Big Eagle remains lodged in the Multnomah County Jail. David. Yeah, Catherine Cook in the newsroom tonight. Thank you, Catherine. In Washington, Governor Jay Inslee signed a bill today updating that state's hate crime law. The law now includes defacement of public property. This comes after pride sidewalks were vandalized in Spokane in September and October. Now anyone who commits a hate crime on public property could be charged with a felony and face up to five years in jail along with a $10,000 fine. Meanwhile, we're hearing from Oregon's governor about some of the bills passed in Salem during the short session. Her remarks today a bit of a political victory lap and an acknowledgement that there is much more work to be done. Blair Best with the update. Outside the steps of the state library are signs of a pain felt across Oregon. It's hell. It's pure, it's pure hell. Cold, tired, um, and wet. There's just no help. People, I wish that the community and the homeless could come together and collaborate instead of it being us against them. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Inside Thursday morning, Governor Tina Kotek attempts to instill confidence on what's being done to address this crisis. At the top of my list, for the session was housing production. Last week marked the end of the short legislative session. Several bills passed around increasing housing supply and supporting shelter capacity, including $65 million to maintain emergency shelter and $41 million to prevent evictions. As long as the money can get to where it's supposed to go, then that's good, but I'll believe it when I see it. Here's the bottom line. We just have to make it easier for communities to build housing. It's needed. It's badly needed. More housing is the long-term long solution for our homelessness crisis. But we also have to continue to forge ahead on meeting the needs of people who are living outside right now. Like Sarah, homeless for five years and addicted to meth. Um, but I think in order, to, in order for that to work, they have to mandate drug and alcohol treatment. Perhaps the most anticipated and controversial bill of the session, HB 4002. It essentially revokes portions of Measure 110 and recriminalizes possession of hard drugs. Kotek plans to sign it. The legislature's work this session is but one step 
in making sure we help Oregonians suffering from addiction while also ensuring community safety. And I also have been in prison. I know that the prisons are full of people with drug crimes. Stop putting the drug addicts in prison. Get them help. A key piece to that bill is setting up a deflection program, the option of sending people like Sarah to treatment instead of jail. Kotex says accountability will be critical here. My expectation is that there will be appropriate guidelines and training for law enforcement to understand what is now different, what that means for deflection. I would hope that DAs are making appropriate choices. Because you're not going to change anybody unless they want to. And usually it's the hard times that makes you want to. Blair Best reporting tonight. By the way, the governor has yet to sign the drug recriminalization bill. That is because she says she's putting together a list of expectations for counties around their deflection programs. Now, once signed, the bill would go into effect in September. All right, let us talk decision 2024 in one of the most closely watched races on Oregon's May ballot. The battle for Multnomah County District Attorney pitting incumbent Mike Schmidt against one of his senior deputies, Nathan Vasquez. The two met this morning for their first debate with Vasquez arguing that many of the Rose City's problems are because of a failure of his boss's policies. He blames Schmidt's support for Measure 110 as a reason why open fentanyl use has proliferated in Portland Center City, pointed to a fractured relationship between police and the DA's office. Now, Schmidt acknowledged challenges, though said he inherited many of them when he took office and added when it comes to things like crime rates, his policies are actually helping. He wants to pretend that every challenge in the world is my fault or some policy. He can't actually draw those lines. My strategy and my style is more like, all right, challenge, and then what did we do, and what's the result? And so if it's gun violence, and we're seeing that go down, still needs to go down more, and we're working on that. But if it's auto theft, we saw the spike, now it's going back down. Well, it's worth noting both candidates support the recriminalization of drugs along with the deflection programs we've been talking about. Vasquez also touched on his vision for the county if he takes his boss's seat. We're going to see you know, an end to this feeling that we can walk down the street and just see person after person either overdosing or using fentanyl. You're going to have a DA that's going to work with our public safety um, partners to really bring forward meaningful change and to help people get into treatment. Well, the election is just over two months away, May 21st. And before that, you're going to have a chance to see the candidates debate live all over again. It's going to be Thursday, May 2nd at 630 in the evening, only here on KGW. To get you caught up on tonight's other headlines, a Lincoln County man charged with killing his mother apparently told officers he needed to protect himself because she was a vampire. Sheriff's deputies were sent to a home in Solette's Tuesday night where they found the body of 79-year-old Judy Poe. According to court documents, 60-year-old Robert Poe told deputies he believed he accidentally killed his mother. He told them his mom would poke him at night and would often wake up with blood on the sheets. The investigation there is ongoing. The superintendent of the Silver Falls School District has resigned amidst a growing financial crunch. District officials say Scott Drew stepped down at last night's board meeting. Drew had led the Silverton Bay School District since the summer of 2020. Last month, district leaders revealed that it will be more than $800,000 in the red by the end of this school year. The board has named an interim superintendent. And a Friday traffic alert for drivers. Crews will be working on the Morrison Bridge in the morning starting at 8 until noon. Now, during that window, there's going to be several lifts, each lasting about 20 minutes. Multnomah County suggests using alternate routes like the Hawthorne or Burnside bridges. And new at 11, the county is now asking for public input on the design for a new Burnside Bridge. Tonight's public meeting was all part of the county's effort to construct a span capable of withstanding a major earthquake. It's one of several meetings they'll have before settling on a bridge type this fall. Those involved in the phase of this project, in this phase rather, say a replacement is overdue. These bridges, they have a lifespan, so you know they hit kind of that 100-year mark, and it's really time to uh, to replace them. And so we want to honor that kind of service that they've done for us for the last 100 years, but acknowledge that the community needs something they can rely on in the future. Yeah, the current bridge opened in 1926. If all goes as planned, a new bridge could open sometime in the early 2030s. The current price tag hovering around $900 million. Straight ahead on KGW News at 11, why a local school district is now pushing to add metal detectors on some campuses. 
Plus, there is no dancing around this one. Local TikTok creators chime in on the impact of a potential app ban on their business. Hey, Portland hit 66 degrees today. Here's a question for you. Is our warmest day since when? December 5th, November 2nd, October 20th, or October 8th? I'll have the answer up for you next, and here's the Scoot Report.